It says we're live. All right. We're going to look at uh, the Canvas, well, like the Mosaic Palette 2 Pro multicolor printing accessory. Uh, that's what we're going to look at today and a few other things uh, related to multicolor. We already talked about multicolor printing way back. So I'm looking at the looking at the schedule here. Um, when was it? Um, somewhere way up here. Oh yeah, there it is, class four. So we did a, a multicolor thing before. What we did back then was, I think I even mentioned the, the palette too at that point, uh, but what we were really looking at was uh, how you could layer different colors. So print one color for a while, switch out to another color and print it for a while, and then maybe even switch to another one and so forth um, to get kind of this uh, multicolor effect, but it was really just two colors, one on top of the other. Um, this device, its goal is to blend together, not blend, that's the wrong word, because it doesn't actually mix the colors to make new colors. Um, well, not intentionally. Sometimes it does that, but you're not trying to do that when it does. Um, it's to, to integrate the colors together so that they come out in a certain order. So here's a, here's a piece of what it might produce. So this has white, blue, and there's some black all spliced together in one filament strand. So into the machine went uh, a white filament, a black filament, a blue filament, and then I think also had a yellow one in there also. And you can see how it splices them together. It melts whichever one was already in there and uh, heats up the next one, pushes them together, and then cools them. Uh, in what they call the splice core and you end up with these little hopefully really nice transitions from one color to the other color um, and the pattern of these transitions is supposed to line up with uh, the pattern that your printer is printing so it's been sliced in their special slicer or you can use your slicer like Prusa or Cura um, and a an add-on that they've produced to to create the right pattern so it knows you know what color it needs at what time um, and this obviously it does make the filament um, it it is questionable to me on whether this is the uh, the best way to do this or not maybe right now it's the only way to do it um, actually it's not there are other ways to get colored filament um, uh, the da Vinci printer has a ink that basically you put a, a non-colored, basically white filament in, and it tints it with ink as it passes through the nozzle, or well, before it passes through the nozzle, as it passes through the extruder part. Um, I've never worked with one of those printers, but uh, the idea there is basically you're printing the color onto the filament as needed, and it uh, uh, can do any colors at that point, because you're basically, operating it sort of like a regular color printer, not 3D printer, but paper printer. Um, and uh, I haven't used one of those though, so I can't really say how well they work. Um, you don't see them much. In fact, the only one I know FDM style that does that is the Da Vinci. Let's see if they even sell it. If I can find what it's called. XYZ Printing Da Vinci Color 3D Printer. Uh, I don't, here it is, one left in stock. Um, but this guy, here you can even see it even looks like printer ink cartridges. Uh, in fact, they're, they're basically are. Um, and let's see, you can get full color print, or supposedly you can get full color prints. Again, I haven't ever used one of these. I kind of want to, they're, they're sort of expensive though. I don't even see the price on this one. Uh, Huh. Well, let's see. See all buying options. Yeah, this is used, so I don't think they're actively making these right now. Um, in fact, here's a here looks like a upgrade uh, version, newer version, sixteen hundred dollars. But the reviews are kind of low on them. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, the idea there's kind of the idea. Where did it go? Um, where you're mixing the color. To produce what you color you want so that's a different way about going about what we're going to talk about here with the palette uh, from mosaic um, they literally let me get it over here so we can look at it 
It's actually still connected to all the filament, so it's going to be a pain to do. But let's see if we can not tangle everything up too bad. Wow, we got to zoom out some. There we go. You can see most of it. And you can even see there's a red, a blue, a yellow over here. There's a white one. Um, and what it does is there are four stepper feeder motors here. Um, and you can, let's see, maybe we can get down in there and see, take it all apart. It has these thumb screws that uh, help you disassemble it because you do end up taking it apart a lot uh, to clear out a jam or whatever. Um, I've actually had this one for maybe a year or so, maybe a year and a half, <clears throat> but I haven't printed with it a lot. So um, you can kind of see here's the same type of uh, feeder that you would have on your Ender 3, uh, except there's four of them. And uh, they, they have these sensors to tell when there's filament in there. Um, and they have uh, drive motors and four distinct paths to get into this area. So this area is where the splicing happens. Um, this wheel is controlled by another stepper embedded down in the machine. You can't see it. You can see the belt that's uh, connected to it, though. Uh, this one has basically a razor blade on it, uh, and it will chop filament. In fact, we could probably get it to run through just a generic, if my power cord will reach. Let me see. Let's see if we can get it to run through a generic uh, splicing routine. I'll have to put that cover back on. Um, well, actually I won't. It'll be fine. Should be fine anyway. Uh, so I've got, like I said, four different ones and um, one print mode, there's a couple of print modes. One of them is just random or, or maybe you create a pattern of, I want some yellow for 30 uh, centimeters, then blue for 40 centimeters. You can make these patterns um, or just a random pattern are the reason that you're probably, if you're interested in this sort of thing, the pattern, the mode where it's actually splicing them together in order so that they come out of your printer in a certain order and print a multicolor part. Let's just, um, well, let's just do the uh, splice tuning. Why are we on start print? Let's go here. And uh, that way it'll make one splice for us. All right, well, well, all right, cancel. Yeah, I do have to have that cover on there because it's, uh, it's gonna want to come up out of its track. Let's see, let's go home. Controls. Got to clear this thing out. These springs are super stiff. There we go. All right, let's put the cover back on the way you're supposed to do it. It is... You know, I have the older, the original one of these, the version one, um, and this is a big improvement over version one for sure. Um, version one was this big white box looking thing. Um, I'll see if I can find a picture of it. I don't have it in the room with me here. But um, so this is, it's very nicely made uh, and they've thought about how you can easily take it apart to get inside to, you know, clear out something or just if you need to make a repair, they even give you a couple of spare parts uh, for things that uh, you have to replace every now and then. Um, let's try that again. So we're going to go to settings, splice tuning. All right. Now let's see. It's just going to take the first two colors here and uh, try and splice. Actually, right now it's clearing everything out of the way uh, in case there was stuff in there. All right. So we did that. Now we're going to, it's going to feed in this white colored filament and there's a little homing switch right there so it knows where the end of the filament is that's going to feed in this yellow and it's going to go hit the homing switch now um it's asking me over here what uh parameters uh i don't know they're kind of blown out on your screen but it's heat 
compression and cooling. So how hot or how long do I want to heat the thing? I want to go with three. How much compression? I'm going to do one. Uh, so that's pushing the melted filament ends together. And then cooling, since I'm at three heat, I'm going to let it cool for two. And I don't know. We'll leave them at that. Uh, we could have left them at zero, all zeros, and uh, that would have been just a default. All right, so here goes the white filament, and it's going to go into, this is the splice core, and it's going to come out here, and it's going to go over into this buffer area over here. This is for when you're printing with it, so it doesn't get too far behind. It does take a while to print. There was the chopping. So the end of the white is right here. Now this you can kind of see that LED came on. This is heating up now, um, and it's heating up the end of the white filament. The yellow is basically right here right now, um, and they're being heated, and actually they're being cooled already because there's a little cooling fan on. So they've already been joined, and now they're cooling down based on how long I told it to cool. I didn't say, I, I think I put it on two maybe, um, that's not necessarily two seconds. I think it's the default plus a half, two half seconds. I think is what that amounted to. Now it's it's made the join. There's the join right there, or the splice. It's going to send a bunch of this out and then chop it off and let us pull it out the end. And here it comes. This little wheel right here. Um, is the encoder wheel and it is what keeps track of how much filament has actually exited the machine so it can kind of track yeah remember we looked at the G code last time where it shows how much filament is supposed to have been extruded at any given point in the print this um, encoder wheel keeps track of how much filament left the splicer the pallet and the G code says how much filament has supposed to have been used, and so it tries to sync these things together. Um, and then this little this little switch right here that's lighting up. This is the basically I've run out of spare filament, so um, that can be a problem on really short splices. If you have a lot of ch color changes on the same layer, um, you can end up eating up all your filament, uh, and there's none left. The machine isn't made enough yet, uh, so it's still waiting on filament and that can be a problem um, it does have a way to handle that by slowing down your printer um, so that uh, during splicing or low buffer times it can maybe slow down the printing and uh, not run out of filament so there's the splice this one actually is a decent splice um, there's a little tiny bit of necking there it's a little bit thinner right there um, let's see if it's how it's relatively flexible. It does get a little hardened because it, you know, it's been melted and cooled back together. So it's a little bit that those joins are a little bit stiffer. Um, and that's what you go in with those three settings, the heating, compression, and cooling to tune this to the filaments you're using. These are just PLA. Um, so that, uh, you have the best possible join. I actually haven't had it, uh, make a bad join, uh, splice in the time that I've used it, uh, they've all been fine. Um, this one, you know, I just put random numbers in there. Well, not totally random. Um, it is a little bit thicker. So if I were running a, a system that had a really tight tolerance on the tubing, uh, this could be a problem. Now I'm printing on the Prusa, which doesn't have a Bowden tube. So, uh, I don't even have to worry with that part of it. Um, save these. Now I'm not going to save those settings. Um, but that's how it works. And so that pattern happens over and over again. Um, we could go ahead and, since we took that apart, we might as well take this apart so you can see down in here. There's not a lot to see, but just so you can see what the machine looks like and does. Having trouble picking that one up. So again, this is the buffer. Um, there's a little switch here that basically tells when the uh, filament in the buffer is out. That's, that's cooled down. This is the splice core. This is the splice core pro. They do have plastic versions of this. This one is an aluminum version, which is a little more durable. So inside here, now I had a lot of trouble um, 
And then, in fact, I had to order some more. Inside here, there's this little white. Well, let's see if we can get some of the color. Get it. Wow, it's just gonna. I don't know. You're not gonna be able to. There we go. We can turn it that way. Um, there's a little white Teflon tube that runs from here through here that the filament fits through. Um, you can kind of see the little heater right there. Uh, that little coil is the heater. We're kind of, uh, let's see, focusing on the background and not the picture. There we go. Um, and you do have to replace this eventually. It says after 5,000 splices. Um, this machine has probably done, I don't know, 1,000 splices or so. Um, one print could have 300, 400 splices in it, even for a relatively small thing, depending on the color changes. Um, but uh, this thing, I did have one jam in here, and I took this out and getting it back in, which it's meant to do. I'm not going to take it out right now, but you basically pull this and pull the tube out. Um, it, it created a lot of problems getting it back in there, mainly because it was kind of, it shouldn't have been used up at that point. Um, these are consumable, the tubing itself is, uh, but it was for whatever reason, uh, and I had to get it back in there, which was not so simple to do, but did manage. Um, after some sanding and uh, reshaping the tube and a lot of, a lot of trouble to get that back in. Um, they do sell extra ones of those, and I have ordered some. They just haven't come in. So it, it is easy to get in here and, and make changes or clear out, you know, if you have a piece of filament stuck in there somehow. It is easy to do that. So it's made to be able to uh, get in there and, and work on things, which is good. Um, let's look at some of the prints that I've gotten from this thing. All right. That's gonna be all tangled up. We'll have to <laughs> have a big mess. Here's the here's what the filament rack looks like now. So there's the filaments, and now they're all tangled up. So I have to I'll have to fix that. But uh, let's look at the prints. Um, so the first thing you do is these calibration prints. So I'm gonna show these. I think this is the order. This is the first one I did uh, going to the last one. I, I changed colors just because. Um, so they actually, the very first one even, looks relatively good. Um, so this is the actual print. And then you have this that's waste material. This is the purge block. So uh, the transition, even though, you know, there's not that much actual transition between blue and white in this case or white and black you know it's pretty pretty short transition zone um, the actual color change getting all the previous color out of the nozzle um, and the new color in takes I think I've got it set to um, 110 millimeters maybe something like that of printing to get the color completely changed and so that's what this is this is basically waste Now there are some other slicers. This this happens in in all of these type of um, color changing things. Is you have to purge when you have one nozzle, then you have to purge from the old color to the new color, and they all have something like this. Um, some slicers actually go and say, well, if I want to print this thing, I'm not going to print a block, and they print it as something useful um, or just another copy of your your object, but it's going to have the colors all messed up or whatever but um, this is essentially waste. Now, at least for these, they use this block to kind of help you tune the settings for how, how long to purge and uh, all these um, lead out settings and um, what else do they call it? Um, the ping settings and things like that. Um, so it's, it, this machine does learn over time. Like it has some artificial intelligence baked into it that um, with that encoder wheel and the G codes note telling how much filament should have come out and it's tracking how much it actually came out. Um, and so it does, it does learn uh, a little bit over time and I haven't printed with it enough to, for it to have gotten very smart yet. Um, so I'm, I'm still having a decent amount of not successful prints, 
But these are the first things you do. These are their mosaic keychains that you calibrate with. And they, this one looks okay, except the back. Um, now, this is one reason I changed colors. It's because the this white, I thought it was white, it says white on it, but it's actually more of a uh, clear. It kind of is the same type of color as a milk jug. Uh, so it, it doesn't actually have this nice white color when it's thin. Um, if you stack enough of it on top of each other, then it, okay, it looks kind of, Kind of white you can see the edge of it um but this is more or less what we were doing when we just changed the colors out after a layer except that the back is supposed to be like this the two colors are clear uh the distinction between the two colors are clear here you can't really tell but it could have been that the white that i was using wasn't um you know you just basically transparent so you can't tell if it's there or not um, so I printed another one and I switched to two colors that you could tell apart. Um, and here you can see there is um, clearly yellow and although it's kind of a greenish color uh, because it's mixing a little bit with the blue and you can use this purge box. This one actually looks correct. This, this is some uh, old filament that uh, was stuck on the nozzle. Um, so it's not actually part of the print. So this transition is what you want. Um, then I printed another one. On top it looks fine, but you can even see here where there's some bleed between the yellow and the black color in this inner part right here. You can even see it, and you can see the the wall it print or the two walls it printed are this uh, grayish color because it's mixed. Well, I don't know if you can tell. Maybe like that. Um, it's mixing. Uh, and it didn't purge everything in the purge block. In fact, you can't even hardly see where the yellow's coming in here, um, where you can clearly see it over on the other one. So I did it again, and this is what you're finally, this is what you're trying to get it to do. So you've got an, a nice purge between your two colors. Um, you've got distinct uh, colors on the bottom. The top obviously still has, is distinct colors. Uh, the top actually printed fine on all of these. Um, because it's basically just printing colors on top of other colors. It's not really switching between them. And, and the transition between the two colors happens underneath this layer, so you can't see it anyway. Um, that's why you can look at the back. Um, so you get it this far. This wasn't actually not that hard to get it that far. Um, these prints are, I don't know, 30 minutes long or something like that. They're not terribly long. Um, and you think, okay, now we're doing good. So then I tried printing a couple of other things that require splices for each layer. Um, like this, where this is uh, two different colors on the same layer. And here are the things I got. So the first one I tried was this guy. And he started really well. So this is a lizard thing, or uh, well, a couple of layers of a lizard. Um, and this purge block looks okay. Um, but then it got in, wow, that's going to be hard to see. We're up to, there we go. It got in to, I don't know, layer 10 or 15. I don't know what, I didn't count them. Somewhere in here. And it started flip-flopping the colors. So it had gotten off sync somehow with its splicing and the printing that was going on. Um, it was working perfectly up until that point. Um, and that's where these pings uh, where it sends out, or well, it doesn't actually send out a ping, uh, but it's uh, tracking the, the change in that encoder and what the G-code says the printer is supposed to have done. Um, I actually have this connected to uh, Octoprint with a plug-in. So the computer, well, the computer is the Raspberry Pi running Octoprint. Um, the palette and the printer are all connected together through that uh, Octoprint setup. Um, and so it can, it can try and work itself out. Um, I stopped this print. It didn't fail other than the color changes. I stopped it and scaled it down. This was going to be a long print, like four or five hours to print this guy. Um, it does obviously take longer to print anything in multicolor because ha at least half the time, maybe more, it's over here purging the colors out, you know. And so it doesn't necessarily always print solid. You can kind of see it's it's kind of got some gaps in there, sort of like infill, but um, not necessarily infill, just the purge doesn't have to be this solid block. Um, so I stopped that one. And then 
I printed a smaller one. So I scaled him down. And same thing, but this one I let keep going and it only got worse. <laughs> so um, it actually, you know, got a couple of, that's, a, that's essentially the same layer height, you know, Maybe it made it a little bit further on this one before it started getting off. Um, these, though, if you can see in here, it, actually they show up on camera better than in person. These aren't the layers being wrong. This is uh, actually green. So what that is is the purge between yellow and blue uh, didn't clear out over here in the purge block, and some of it was actually still happening on the little lizard. Now, this top part... Um, I don't know if this is purge issues or not. Um, it, he was supposed to have black eyeballs, and so the black is just such a strong color compared to yellows. and uh, So it probably is a combination of it got off and it didn't get purged out. And now this guy had a purge block bigger than him, um, but it still wasn't enough to get the transition. You can change uh, the, si the amount of purging that happens. And there are other ways you can just move the print head off to the side and literally drop filament off to the side of the bed um, if you want to. Uh, that You almost need some capturing device for that to happen. Otherwise, it may not actually come loose from the nozzle. And then you've got uh, this filament strings everywhere. Um, but just here's a big downside of these things. So... Let's let's zoom out. Here's the purge block. I'm in grams here. So this is 24 grams of purge block for two grams of actual printed part. Now, if I were in some kind of production setting where I'm trying to make a bunch of little geckos, um, multicolor geckos, then I could load up the entire bed with these geckos and once I get the purge block the right size, I'd only need that one purge block um, because uh, they're all going to be, you know, if they're all the same part, then they're all going to be the same pattern. Um, and the purge only needs to happen once between the colors, and then I can print multiple geckos. So you do get some advantage at scale if you're trying to do that at all. Um, but uh, that's that's a lot of lot of material to get very little, assuming it came out right to begin with. This one didn't even come out right. Um, but uh, I moved on and I decided, well, let's print something that has bigger transitions. These little small transitions are tough for it to do. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, every layer has a color change. Uh, the colors are tough to purge one to the other although they were doing fine until it got up to here somehow and it quit working it got off sync somehow that is part of the learning you do have to print a lot of things with it for it to get these pings down uh to the right uh sync, sync in sync with the printer um but then i moved to a bigger thing and i moved to this guy and he, he had some of the same problems. Like here's the layer changing where it was supposed to be printing black, but it printed blue and, and, and it got back on track up here. And you can kind of see the black in here and the blue where it's supposed to be. And there's one little layer in here that didn't uh, transition all the way correctly. It's kind of greenish. Um, his biggest problem is he's missing the top of his head. So this one is where the little tube that I showed you um, I never did get the gecko to print correctly. I, I didn't print him again though, so I haven't actually gone back to print it. This guy was working pretty well. Now it, I did try some of that uh, that white filament. That uh, it's really transparent white, like milky white, um, and it had issues purging. Um, and that's not surprising to me because it has such a weak color to begin with. I actually need some better white filament. Um, so that part doesn't bother me. This is not so bad. This is just my transition tower um, wasn't quite big enough, although you're about to see it. It's not like it's a small transition tower. Um, but this one was actually going okay, except that um, it actually jammed in the tube in the machine and just that it, it couldn't pull the filament out um, of the machine. So that's where I had to go in and, and take it apart and fix it but it was you know it was actually like okay that's not so bad <clears throat> six 17 grams got printed 
but the purge block for this thing 90 grams 89 grams um, and it's this massive block and you kind of see the you know it's not like they're terribly ugly in fact I've seen um, who was it maybe one of the YouTube guys Uncle Jesse somebody I don't remember who um, but they took all of their purge blocks and made something of it afterwards like a resin clock or something um, with these patterns in the uh, uh, as the thing because you do end up with this is this is a lot uh, now again if I had been able to print I don't know I could probably printed 10 or 15 of these little guys on the bed with one purge block and then it gets a little more balanced um, but I was like okay this is not horrible and maybe the problem is it didn't save the data because it didn't finish the print so it didn't save the fact that it had actually corrected itself here where it got off and then it corrected later this is more uh, this is not a layer shift this is um, the transition not being correct um, but I couldn't save any of the data because it it actually locked up <clears throat> but I printed what I print next um, oh I tried let's make a really really small thing so I printed a little tiny token and it came all apart so I had some under extrusion issues um, I, it came loose from the actually it came loose from here it broke um, but this tiny little guy again one little thing it doesn't even register on the scale this is the purge block that goes with it <laughs> you know um, this giant so it doesn't pay for one thing the tiny things are tough to get the transitions to work anyway although they were working okay right in there uh, the problem with this one was it there was nothing inside here um, basically I should have had more infill to keep the part together um, but that that's an interesting thing then I printed this guy I think this might be the last one I've printed no there's one more um, I thought well let's do a different kind of dragon so this is one of the MakerBot dragons I've scaled a lot of these things down just because they take forever to print otherwise um, he had the same type of issue here where some of this is it's in the wrong location um, but a lot of it's not transitioning correctly between the yellow over here and you can see this is all supposed to be yellow um, but a lot of it's green and this grayish black color um, those are the yellow didn't get cleared out well enough um, again I use that white material for his teeth and nails here which uh, it just doesn't do it's such a weak color it just didn't work very well and then there's some layer shifts up here for not layer shifts but color shifts up here um, it did finish the print though um, and the print itself looks fine um, the I am using their slicer um, I'll show it to you in a minute it's actually it's not a horrible slicer or anything it slices fine um, and it has some neat features but tuning this thing is really tough um, but it printed fine again let's see um, 10 grams of actual print and 123 of purge block um, because you know every layer he's having to switch between at least blue and yellow some of them blue yellow white and then a few blue yellow maybe black and white all in the same layer and so um, lots of purging and, and you can kind of see this is where this matches up with this worse section in here where it's just not purging that yellow um, you do have to be careful with the colors that you're trying to get from one color to the other color um, because some colors just you either have to increase the amount of purge block that you're going to do or um, you need to make the colors work together um, I did try one other thing where I tried to make a bunch of tiny little things and I these are the last things I printed these, these ran last night for a little bit um, so here are these are little spaceship tokens for a print and play game you can get off of board game geek um, I think it's called under falling skies so it's these space invader type board game anyway these are tokens I tried to color them um, so 10 grams and actually less purge block seven grams so one purge block but this one has a new problem 
that uh, I haven't I haven't sorted out because I just got them off the bed today. But let's see. Can you see? Let me zoom in. Yeah, you can see in there. It's very lumpy, like those little blobs, particularly on the yellow under bot on the bottom, but even on the blue ring around here. Um, those are typically like if I saw that on a print that uh, I was printing on a normal printer, um, those would be pauses. So whenever your printer pauses and maybe it's just behind on the G code or uh, it's you know it's processing or whatever something, um, blobs like that are usually your nozzle has paused momentarily. But they're all over all of these things. So I'm not. I need to work on this and see why it's pausing. Is it pausing? It shouldn't even be because it got behind in the buffer because that entire layer is yellow. Whoops, where are we at? There, down here, that's all yellow. There's no transitions to make. So I don't know what is causing that. They're not on just one side, so it's not a cooling thing. They really look like pauses um, for some reason. So I need to track that down. I haven't even bothered to look at it yet. These are you know yes we did finally find a scale where you print enough of these little things and you get more of them than you have purge block but um now the print is not that good all the other prints were fine they the the quality of the surface finish of the print was fine this one is not so i did use a different method to color these though so we'll look at that next how do you actually make tell it what colors to use so that's going to be over here. Uh, well, that's that's the palette. No, here's the price. So these aren't cheap little things. Where's my cursor? Oh, it's not working on this pad. There we go. Um, so I I'm running the palette two. No, I don't have the palette two S. Uh, well, I have the palette two. The S um, has a few upgrades to help it print multicolor better. Um, so are these normal with the palette or problems with my setup? Um, I think it's a little both. Um, my setup I'm using, uh, I haven't, part of getting this thing up and running is that you have to print with it a lot so that it, the artificial intelligence can kick in and it learn, you know, better pacing on when to splice and when to do all this stuff and, and the transition towers. I have not tried making the transition longer and I haven't tried any of the other transition methods like purging off to the side or any of those things. Um, so some it's some of both. There are lots of issues with just this style of printing, you know, where you're trying to chop up filament and then expect it to come out the other end, which in my case, I've got kind of far away. If I move them closer together um, and didn't have quite the, the distance between the palette and the printer, that would help. Um, and I did order a tube that will get them closer together. Um, but uh, I am not, I mean, obviously they on their website and, and picture user pictures uh, show very nice results. Um, that I haven't really gotten yet. <laughs> so um, here we can look at the stories. You know, you can see, you know, really clean transitions between things. Uh, even difficult colors, you know, really uh, high saturation blues and reds here that have trend. Uh, mm -hmm. color. Now this one, whoops, uh, this one here probably has different parts except for the spider on the back and actually the gaunt, the, the forearm piece back here. And obviously this camo pattern has some black and really light gray, almost white in it. Um, so they're getting, it is possible. It's just a lot of setting up to get it to get to that level. Um, you do have to go calibrate your flow rate uh, really well on the printer. So you get uh, the, well, also your uh, yes, that is just marketing. Yes, they're, they're clearly not going to post <laughs> the bad prints on here. Um, but you can go to the um, their Facebook group page and users there do post things that look good. Um, clearly, they also post things like mine that, well, why is this happening? Um, so I want to, at the end here, I'm going to look at some other options to do this also. Uh, this isn't the only one. There are others. Um, this is just the one I have. 
Um, so where was I going? Oh yeah, yeah, the the slicer. So the way the slicer works is, uh, first of all, you can use their slicer called Canvas, uh, which runs in your browser, or you can use your slicer and an add-on called Chroma. Um, I've used the Chroma add-on once, and uh, it it's finicky to set up in Prusa. Um, it looked like it was pretty straightforward to set up in Cura. Um, I just wanted, since I was using the Prusa to test this with, I wanted to use the Prusa slicer, and I did get it set up. It was just cumbersome to deal with. Um, but uh, let's start a new project so we can show how this works. So there's there's two main ways this works. One way is uh, you get a multi-part model. Let's see if I can find... Uh, Here's the dragon one. I'm going to bring the dragon in here. Oh, I forgot that he's a bunch of different. All right. Got to get the right pieces. I'm over on the side here, uh, grabbing the pieces. So I've got four different pieces of him. Actually, you might, this might be useful. So like this piece, oh wait, this piece <laughs> right here is the spine and eyebrows so these are all one color there's a piece of the model there's his mouth and toes they're all going to be one color um chest and horns they're, they're going to be the same color and then the body here so if i grab all of those chest and horns um uh, body mouth and toes spine and eyebrows bring get all of those and drag them into the slicer in the multi-material side of the slicer it will assemble them all together hopefully and well they came in kind of crooked but uh, let's let's rotate him around all right and so this is one way where you have a model that has been broken apart into different regions that are going to be uh, certain colors. So over here, you've got your four colors. Right now, I have in one. I've got I've got them arranged. As, I found it works slightly better if you go from your lightest colors to your darker colors. So this is the order I have them in the machine right now, and then I've got a red in there. So that's the order, the four filament. Um, and you just drag. Oh well, I want his teeth to be white. They're already white. Everything's white right now. Um, let's do the chest yellow. Uh, let's make him a red dragon. And then I've got this blue color, so I could load that in with black. Let's just say we put black in there, and we do black for the spine stuff. And so that's that's coloring him. And then it shows this little zone over here for where the transition tower is going to be, because I have that option turned on. Um, in your settings here, you've got almost all, not, there, there are probably some, you know, really uh, specific settings that you don't have access to, uh, but the number of walls, the speeds that you're dealing with, uh, what layer height you're printing, extrusion, flow rate, uh, well, extrusion multiplier is what they're calling flow rate here, uh, your retraction settings, uh, infield density and patterns, uh, there's even vase mode, what temperature you're going to print at, uh, if you need cooling or not. So maybe if you're printing a filament that doesn't need cooling, you can turn that off or you can set it to any percent. Uh, you've got a uh, skirt and brim, a raft, I think. Yeah, there's a raft over here if you want a different material for a raft. Um, one of these materials could be a PVA or a dissolvable even. And so you could print dissolvable parts. Um, there's supports, uh, in fact, there's a support extruder, so you could put uh, the dissolvable filament in this support extruder, have three colors and the dissolvable. Mm -hmm. um, there's the transition options, so you can do the side transitions, I haven't actually tried those. Um, it also goes in and it shows what most users of Canvas, this slicer, uh, are using. And right now there's very few people who do in the side transitions. Uh, transition length I'm right in the default but then notice there's another group over here that's at 135 um, and I might need to move over there it looks like most people are just stuck at the default you know length and then there's this other group that says 
I can't point to it with the cursor because it makes it go away, um, that maybe you need to increase the transition length. Um, and so you've got most of the settings you would expect to have. And then you slice it. Oh, I forgot. This guy takes a while to slice. Let me go ahead and get the Octo print running. Where'd he go? There he is. He's halfway done slicing. All right. We're at a hundred percent, but I guess it's just load. There we go. All right, so it gives you a preview, eight hours and 10 minutes. So it's gonna take a long time to print this little guy. He would look really cool and I might wanna try it. Um, I don't have a really, the, the red color that I have is also one of those milky translucent type colors. Um, what you do at this point, and again, you got this giant transition tower, um, is you send to Canvas, or well, you either download it and print off an SD card. I had zero luck with that working. Um, in fact, I couldn't get it to actually work. Um, and so I set up a Canvas Hub, basically an Octoprint server, uh, and put their Canvas plugin into Octoprint. Um, and that works fine for me. So you send it over there, and you can see it come in, and you can see all the different stuff that I've been printing here. Oh, I forgot. I did have a Pac-Man one. He failed, but not because of the pallet. He failed because he came loose from the bed. Um, I didn't notice that it should have had a brim on it. Um, so, oh, and then we're offline because I'm not connected to any of the printers right now or anything. Um, but over here, you would uh, just click. Uh, you'd have to connect to your printer, connect to your pallet, which isn't even running, so it's not going to connect to it. Um, and they're not plugged in, so um, yeah. You would connect to those things and then you just hit the print button and it goes to work it does splicing um, and then you load the spliced filament into your printer you hit start and it syncs up the start between the printer and the pallet um, because it is the pallet is tracking the encoder wheel which tells it can say sense when you know filament is being pulled out of it out of the buffer um, and so it, it it knows to okay now we're started printing and we can go on from there um, so it's not a difficult process over here um, and and that's that's kind of the generic way you do it um, but maybe you don't want a model that uh, is already broken apart because you you don't want to go break the model apart it's really complicated to go do that uh, maybe in mesh mixer or there's not a model already done um, you can take solid models so let's see if i can find let's just do that spaceship guy that i was printing that came out so bad um let's see this guy so i drug him over here to the solid the single model side he's not multi-part so here he is and i can select him and down here i have this paint option so i can go in and I have, I can paint individual faces. So this is, you know, all triangles. So I could, uh, let's paint with a different color. I can paint individual little triangles on here if I wanted to. Um, I can paint with a sphere. So it's kind of larger. Or I can create regions where it goes in and it kind of detects boundary edges. And then I can, you know, I can paint just in that boundary. Let's see, there's a question over here. Is it splicing on demand or is it creating a splice material? Oh, it's doing both. So it creates a, a I don't know, in my case, a 183 millimeter uh, length of filament that I start with, and then it splices on demand after that. So once it starts using up that filament that it's got already spliced together, um, that's what's in that little buffer, that thing I could call them the buffer. Um, well, most of it's actually outside in a tube, but there's a little bit in the buffer. Um, and then it'll splice on demand. That's one of the reasons I wonder about these smaller parts um, where it has to make lots of splices because each splice, it can't speed up the splice. Each splice takes five to 10 seconds. 
and so it, it does uh, it can get behind and there is uh, I got closed it already I think uh, there is an option for it to if it's getting behind so there's a little switch in the buffer that tells when it's running out of buffer material um, when it when it gets behind it can slow down the print um, it's supposed to slow down the print over the transition tower but I wonder if that's what it was doing um, was slowing down the print inside the print itself on my little spaceships um, I think that's what it's doing so it's doing both there I don't know if there's an option for just printing out the whole string of filament before you even start printing there might be um, I don't know about that though I didn't try that um, I can feel different regions here so you know I could just feel these regions I'm not, you know, I'm clearly missing a bunch over here, but uh, so you can go in and paint it all. Um, you can even stamp like uh, let's I've got a oh, wait, upload an image. So here's a, this is just a JPEG um, over here. And then you can tell it, well, let's see, I want that that uh, teal color to be one of my red colors. Uh, and actually that looks good. So I've got I don't well, it's got this weird Let's see. Let's make that black also. It's picked up a slightly different uh, Red in there for some reason or I don't maybe it's just showing that I can't tell um, Anyway, I can take and oh, I should have <laughs> I should have rotated cancel cancel. Let's rotate our model around to where he's in a convenient position here now let's do that and let's let's make that red I like that red and then you can go in and drop this on the model which you can barely see right now I think it's right here and place it down and now that's on your on your model so you can stamp patterns pictures JPEG um, let's see what it uses JPEG PNG well JPEG and PNG um, and so it will try I haven't done this yet I need to try this one out but it will uh, stamp pictures onto there and print them out in the colors that you have available so you you can go in and paint the only one I've done with that are those little spaceships which did not work out so I'll do some more of that and see if uh, if it actually can work or not uh, better than what I got. I think a lot of the setup on my end just hasn't happened yet. Um, I just haven't gotten enough prints to where it's working. I would want something that is in the $500, $700 range to not need that kind of setup. <laughs> but um, I do understand why it needs that kind of setup just because they've got a device that does what it's supposed to do but the combination of it and your printer, whatever your because it can plug into any printer out there, any FDM printer out there, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of variation between those two things. And so I kind of see how it's, you know, I could probably make a really large transition tower, make sure I'm not trying to do two uh, mini transitions on a layer and get it working pretty well. Um, the the tiny little objects part of the you know I'm, I'm trying to print tiny because I want to get the print done uh, it takes hours and hours to get a large print done this guy took nine hours I think it was uh, to get him done and I want to be able to iterate faster so it's really slow on the iteration of let's make this change and see how it works um, because the bigger prints take forever to do all right um, so those are the different ways. I actually like the, the the patterning that you can do on the slicer and the painting and everything. Uh, it's actually pretty convenient to be able to do that. And so that part works works really well. I haven't gotten the prints done this way to work really well yet. Um, but uh, I do want to work on this one again because there is clearly something wrong. I don't even know what it did with the little spaceships now. But there's clearly something wrong with them when they have all of this uneven printing on them. And clearly there was a lot of bleed 
in here. This the, the red was supposed to only be down in those recesses, but it red and yellow are, are going to be tough to mix together anyway. All right. So how else can you do this? So here's other ways we can do this. One is uh, you could just print models that assemble. So I found this guy from here. He was free too. Right here. He's just a bunch of different parts. So let's see if I can find, here's his folder. He's like, I don't know, 37 different pieces all broken up into, uh, this thing's supposed to be light blue. This is supposed to be black. This is supposed to be white, gray, red. Uh, and you print them all out together and put them together. Uh, some of it snapped together, some of it's glued together. Um, so that's one way you could do it. That, that actually is not so bad. Um, now, some of my print quality is a little bit bad because this film, I, you know, I had to try and find filament colors that um, kind of match these. And uh, so the filament I uh, found is pretty old and uh, I'm surprised it printed at all. Some of this, this red color is, that's at least 10 year old filament that's just been sitting on the shelf. Uh, but it printed, it's all PLA, um, but it did print. Same thing with this white color. Uh, this, this teal color, the only thing I had there was a, a poly smooth filament, which is super bad about um, absorbing moisture. Um, and I had a tiny little bit of it left. Um, it's a cool filament. What it does is it, you know how um, ABS will uh, smooth in acetone. PLA won't do that. Um, this stuff is a modified PLA and it will smooth in uh, isopropyl alcohol. So you can use isopropyl alcohol to smooth it out. Um, it, you can't really just dunk it in isopropyl alcohol. It has to be a mist. They make a special device, which uh, we have over in the lab. Uh, but I did try to spray it on here and it just kind of clumped it up. Um, but that's the only color I could find that was kind of teal. But so that's one thing you can do. Uh, it's just print models that have uh, multiple pieces and you print each piece. Obviously you can paint them. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I don't have this one, so we're going to have to look at it on the web, is Prusa does make their own version of the palette, more or less. Um, so it's meant for uh, their MK Mark III series of printers, um, which I do have. And it mounts up here on the uh, where the filament rack would normally go. Uh, and this is the version 2 multi-material upgrade 2s for mk3s and mk 2.5s 3d printers and so forth um what it does is more or less the same except it does it the version two of this does say well if the palette has four filaments we're going to add five so they have five filament inputs here um you can kind of see them the five different ones coming in here um and they, they use obviously their slicer or well their version of uh slicer that uh, has some other tricks in there. So you can kind of see some of the transitioning happening in the infill, which obviously you got to print the infill anyway. So it's going to save some of your purge block. Um, they do still have purge blocks. Every time I hover over it, it <laughs> uh, covers it up. But you can kind of see some purge blocks back in the background. You can kind of see in the, the one here, uh, you can see, let me zoom in. Nope, it makes the pictures the same size no matter how what level I'm at. Hey, there's that gecko I was trying to print. Um, some of the transition is in the infill. Some of it's in the support material. Here they have, um, hey, if you got to purge this thing, then uh, let's just print some objects as uh, objects, and they're going to be the purge tower. Um, I, this one is surprisingly cheap compared to the palette so the palette was in the 600 dollar range or so this one's in the 300 dollar range um so i am going to get one of these it'll be after this class if you stick around like i'll leave the discord going and obviously all the youtube books go um but in the summer hopefully i'll be able to do this one when i do the class again in the summer um but uh it you know it looks like it basically does the same thing you've got one nozzle uh, with five, in this case, inputs. Um, they do have a couple of nice features here where um, 
well, for one, there's one more color, uh, but the the tube that the splice filament has to go through is much shorter because they're mounting the device on the printer itself. So uh, the more you can control that, all the variables, so the distance between the printer and the splicer, all the more you can control all that stuff, the better results you're going to get. Um, this one has like a month lead time, so I know it's not going to come in. Well, I, actually, this is the last one of these uh, lectures for this course. Um, so I know it's not going to come in for this one. Um, but I'll, I'll, when it does come in, if uh, you're still in the Discord, I'll show you what it can do. Uh, assuming it can do anything any better. Um, it has the same idea of a buffer. Um, the buffer in this case is before the splicing, I believe. Uh, so it's just... I think it is. I don't know. It doesn't really quite make sense to me though. I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I don't have one of these yet, so I can't tell you exactly what it does. Um, but it, that it works more or less the same. Um, so there are other options for this. Uh, the palette and the Prusa multi-material upgrade are the only ones I know of that take multiple filaments and splice them together. There are some nozzles that can do this um, where the nozzle itself will have maybe three inputs into it and they the color mixing happens inside the heat chamber um that i haven't i've never used i wonder if i can even find it i think it's the e3d cyclops maybe no not cyclops well here's one where it's got two uh the cyclops is there are two inputs and they mix down in this uh, heat block down here uh, so there there are other options this one's fifty four dollars and you can try it out um, obviously at that point it may be tough to get the patterns just the way you want them I don't know I've never used one of these at all and I think they have another one like this that um, has more than two inputs so you can do other methods the ones that splice filament together as far as I know there's just the multi-material for the Prusa which I want to say probably only works with the Prusa printer. Um, you could probably force it to work with another printer, um, but it's certainly going to be a challenge, I think, to make it work with a different printer. Um, and then the palette, which will work with any FDM printer, but um, it does have quite a steep learning curve and it's kind of expensive. If you are interested in one of these, like you see the potential for what it can do and it uh, works in your workflow, I would actually look, there are a lot of these on sale used um, and a lot cheaper. Uh, so you might look at that first. I, I wouldn't get the Canvas Hub for $139. Um, that is just a Raspberry Pi. That's all it is. Um, it, they do have their own board in there, um, but the I actually just am running their exact same thing on uh, a Raspberry Pi, you know, a, regular one that's nothing special um so you could certainly get this for cheaper um you might want the warranty if you bought it new uh they do have decent tech support so i did email them a couple of times ask when i was trying to get uh, i couldn't get it to print off the sd and i still haven't gotten it to print off the sd card um and they responded you know within a day it wasn't like live chat or anything but it was uh, they would respond. I would do something, send an email back, and they'd get back to me in a couple of hours probably. Um, there, there's not a, a large community. Like you can't just go on Facebook and get the kind of instant responses you'll get from uh, the Ender 3 Facebook group or any of those other groups. Uh, it's, it seems like there's not that many of these out there in the wild. Um, and I think it probably has a very, very small application of uh why you would want one of these um the the multicolor stuff like this guy was going to be really cool but even that are you going to get consistent uh prints without these uh errors in them maybe over time you could do that and at that point is it worth it to to do that or is it simpler just to paint the thing uh or build it in multiple parts and glue them together like this guy um you know what you have to really think about is this the thing that you want to do because it it is finicky at least to get started with and i haven't gotten past the get started with it stage yet 
I haven't gotten to where I feel like I could just slice stuff, send it to the uh, hub and hit print and it happen. Um, everyone right now is still, I can get to the, send it to the hub and hit print and I'm pretty much uncertain if it's gonna come out as a good print or not. At least I'm certain it will come out as a print. Uh, like I'm pretty certain that I can get prints off of it. Um, but I haven't gotten anywhere I felt like it was uh, going to give me a... I was just guaranteed that I was going to get a good print. Um, now, I will say I've been using the hub, the Octoprint part of the hub. Uh, I used it to print all of this guy, uh, so it's convenient, but that's just Octoprint. It's not anything different at that point. All right. Um, I'll jump over to the Zoom. Like I said, this is the last actual lecture thing. There is one more class, but it's a quiz. There's a quiz open on Thursday. Um, it covers G-Code. It's the same style quiz as quiz one. In fact, some of the same questions from quiz one. Um, but then there's some G-Code questions uh, and troubleshooting type questions, just general uh, 3D printing questions. Um, so that'll open on Thursday. And uh, I'll, I'll go over to Zoom, though. I'll leave the Discord running the whole time. I'm not going to shut it down. Uh, so uh, if you want to keep posting things or asking questions, then that's fine even after the course. Uh, and then sometime in the summer, it should open back up with more activity because I'll do this class again. Um, and it'll, it'll largely be the same, um, but uh, there'll be a few new things. Uh, in fact, one new thing, there is another version. I didn't even think about it. Um, there are printers that have independent extruders. Um, so two independent extruders that can have two different colors. Um, I have one of those that uh, is coming in, but it, again, it, it's not gonna be in for this class. Um, and so it should be something that we can, we can look at in the summer. All right, uh, I'm gonna go to Zoom and I will see any of you over there that need questions answered. Discord running if you have questions over there. Um, and I will see you guys. Well, uh, I guess this is the last one for this one. Uh, actually, if you stay around to the YouTube channel next quarter, I do have one, uh, but it's going to be a machine design. So not 3d printers at all. I'll have some 3d printed stuff in there, but, um, it's a machine design course. So, uh, I don't know if any of you are taking that. All right. I'll see you later.